How do the personal family issues of the Guardians, particularly Star-Lord's encounter with his ambitious celestial father Ego, impact their ability to function as a cohesive team? Missouri, Planet Earth, 1980. Meredith Quill is riding in a car, grooving to tunes on the radio with her boyfriend, whom she affectionately calls her Cosmic Traveler. They sneak away behind a Dairy Queen and venture into the woods, where the man reveals a tiny extraterrestrial sapling to Meredith, explaining that it will soon thrive all around. They share a heartfelt kiss before parting waves. Welcome back to Movie Recap World. Today we will take a look at the movie Guardian of the Galaxy Volume 2, released in 2017. If you're ready, let's begin. 34 years later, the Guardians of the Galaxy, including Peter Quill, also known as Star-Lord, Gamora, Drac, Rocket Raccoon, and Baby Groot, stand united on a platform while striving to obtain Anulac's batteries from their latest employers, the Sovereigns. Armed and prepared, the Guardians brace themselves to confront an interdimensional creature known as the Abelisk. As the Abelisk descends, they leap into action except for Groot, who enjoys the beats of Mr. Blue Sky blaring from a speaker set up by Rocket. The rest of the team battles relentlessly to defeat the Abelisk, while Drax accidentally topples the speaker, much to Groot's dismay. Realizing that the Abelisk cannot be defeated from the outside, Drax takes a daring move and allows himself to be swallowed, attempting to vanquish the creature from within. Star-Lord notices a vulnerable spot on the monster's neck and instructs Rocket to divert its attention upward. Gamora seizes the opportunity and slices the Abelisk downward, ultimately slaying it and freeing Drat. Returning the batteries to the Sovereigns, the Guardians rendezvous with their highest priestess, Aisha. As part of their agreement, the Sovereigns hand over Gamora's sister, Nebula, so the Guardians can transport her to Xandar and claim the bounty on her head. Prior to their departure, Aisha condescends to the Guardians, singling out Peter due to his unique heritage as a half-human and half-alien, deeming it reckless. Undeterred, the Guardians depart with Rocket discreetly pocketing some of the batteries for himself. On their journey to the planet Xandar, the Guardians find themselves unexpectedly pursued by a fleet of sovereign drones seeking retribution for the stolen batteries. Suspecting Rocket as the culprit, the team harbors resentment towards him. As the drones launch an assault, Rocket steers the Milano towards a wormhole that leads to another planet. In the midst of the chaos, a different spacecraft passes by and proceeds to decimate the sovereign drones. From the ship's deck, a man emerges waving to the Grateful Guardians. Evading the drones, the Guardians crash land on a nearby planet. While surveying the wreckage of their ship, the vessel that saved them descends, revealing its passenger to be Ego, who discloses his true identity as Peter's father. Accompanying him is Mantis, his empathic assistant. On a distant planet, Yondu Udonta and his band of Ravengers face dire circumstances. Yondu takes refuge in a nearby inn, coincidentally sharing the space with Howard the Duck. While there, Yandu spots his former comrade, Stakar Ogord, who banished him from the Ravenger team due to the involvement in child trafficking. Among the Ravengers is Taserface, who believes the group needs a new leader, and Kraglin, who has started questioning Yandu's leadership. After conversing with Starkar, the Sovereigns arrive and Aisha approaches Yandu with an offer. Peter remains stunned by the revelation of meeting his father. Ego reveals that he had sent Yandu to fetch Peter after his mother's passing. Peter still grapples with understanding why Ego abandoned Meredith in the first place. Ego extends an invitation for Peter and his friends to visit his planet, though Peter initially hesitates. It is Gamora who convinces him to join his father. Accompanied by Gamora and Drax, Peter embarks on Ego's ship alongside Mantis, while Rocket and Groot stay behind to repair the Milano and keep an eye on Nebula. During the journey on Ego's ship, the trio engages in a conversation with Mantis, who demonstrates her powers by delving into their minds. She reveals Peter's romantic feelings for Gamora, much to Drax's amusement. Meanwhile, the Ravengers stumble upon the forest where the Guardians crash landed. Most of them unwittingly fall into Rocket's trap until Yondu arrives, employing his whistling controlled Yaka arrow. The Ravengers apprehend Rocket and Groot, but when Taserface plans to capture Peter, Yondu hesitates to hand him over. Nebula intervenes by damaging the crest on Yandu's head, rendering him unconscious. She aligns herself with the Ravengers as they imprison Rocket, Groot, and Yandu. Ego transports everyone to his planet, which essentially embodies his consciousness as he is a celestial being. He explains to the trio that he assumed a human form to explore the galaxy and fell in love with Meredith. However, he could not visit her frequently as it would drain his energy. Peter harbors deep resentment toward Ego for leaving Meredith alone to perish. As Peter's emotions intensify, he discovers he possesses tremendous energy linked to Ego's own power. 
Ego teaches him how to control and wield it. On the Ravenger ship, Taserface and his cronies begin ejecting those loyal to Yondu, excluding Kraglin, who watches in disbelief as his friends are executed. As Taserface boasts about his supposed greatness and fearsome reputation, Rocket mocks him relentlessly. Nebula arrives and proposes that the Ravengers turn over their captives to the Kree, who offer bounties for their capture. She also makes additional demands, including a new prosthetic hand. Kraglin escorts her to a vessel she uses to depart from the Ravenger ship, intent on finding Gamora. Mantis and Drax develop a connection, despite Drax's constant reminders of finding her physically unappealing. Drax believes their shared ugliness is a positive aspect as it proves that they can still find love and acceptance. Mantis hints at having something important to tell Drax, but their conversation is interrupted by Gamora, causing Mantis to remain silent and simply escort them to their respective rooms. The Ravengers imprison Rocket and Yondu, confining them to a cell while they entertain themselves with Groot. Yondu discloses that he once was a Kree battle slave before Starcar rescued him and brought him to the Ravengers' fold. When Rocket questions Yondu about why he kept Peter around, Yondu explains that Peter's small size allowed him to access spaces where others couldn't. Determined to escape, Rocket and Yondu decide to collaborate. They enlist Groot's help and instruct him to retrieve a prototype fin for Yondu's head. After initially bringing back the wrong items, Groot eventually acquires the correct fin, enabling Yondu and Rocket to break free. Yondu employs his deadly arrow to eliminate mutinous Ravengers they encounter, while Rocket and Groot join in the fight against their captors. The trio boards an escape ship with Kraglin, but not before Yondu sets the entire vessel to self-destruct. Taserface, despite being engulfed in flames, manages to alert Aisha on Yondu's whereabouts before perishing in the explosion. The remaining four must undergo a series of 700 jumps to reach Ego's planet. On Ego's planet, Peter attempts to woo Gamora with his dance moves, but she struggles to reciprocate his attraction, unable to express her own feelings. After Gamora departs, she encounters Nebula, who arrives in her ship and opens fire on Gamora. Nebula crash lands and engages in a fierce battle with her sister. Nebula gains the upper hand, but reveals that her intention was never to prove her superiority. She merely desired a genuine sisterly bond. Nebula's success as a warrior led to their father, Thanos, subjecting her to severe mutilation, fueling her resentment toward Gamora. The two sisters form an uneasy alliance as they stumble upon a cavern filled with numerous skeletons. Peter and Ego continue to deepen their connection. Ego informs Peter that as long as there is a light on the planet, Peter will retain his powers and immortality. Mantis observes Peter's increasing compliance with Ego now that he is aware of his abilities. Hastily, she awakens Drax to warn him about Ego's true intentions, which have become apparent. Rocket, Groot, Yondu, and Kraglin reach their destination. Rocket initially boasts about his desire to save Peter purely to assert his superiority and taunt him, but Yondu silences him by exposing his true fear and the tough facade he maintains. Together, they set off to confront Ego. Ego elucidates his plan to Peter, referring to it as the Expansion. He confesses that he traveled to countless worlds in the galaxy, planting seeds to extend his power and assimilate the planets into an extension of himself. Ego impregnated women from these worlds, producing numerous offsprings that Yandu delivered to him. However, when these children failed to possess the same celestial power, Ego had them killed and their remains are what Gamora and Nebula discovered. Peter discovers that he possesses the very power Ego sought. Furthermore, Ego admits to causing Meredith's death by implanting the tumor in her head, sparing himself the agony of separation. In rage, Peter retaliates by unleashing a relentless assault on Ego. In response, Ego seizes control of Peter, compelling him to spread the seedlings across the planets, leading to widespread devastation. To compound matters, Ego crushes Peter's Walkman and his cherished Awesome Mix Volume 2, a sentimental gift from his late mother. Rocket, Groot, and Yondu rendezvous with Gamora, Drax, Nebula, and Mantis, preparing themselves to confront Ego. Unfortunately, they find themselves pursued by a fleet of vengeful sovereigns intent on their demise. Peter combats Ego in his human form, while Ego's planetary embodiment fights back. Mantis successfully induces sleep in Ego, enabling the Guardians to engage the sovereigns. Through a fierce battle, they ultimately decimate the sovereign fleet using a barrage of lasers. Meanwhile, Rocket constructs a bomb using the stolen batteries, which Groot grabs and races away with, despite Rocket's warning about the perilous consequences of pressing the wrong button. 
a fireball strikes Mantis, causing her to lose control over Ego and allowing him to regain consciousness. As the rest of the team seeks safety, Ego begins engulfing them. Peter continues his confrontation with his father, utilizing his celestial powers. Liberated, Groot discovers Ego's brain as the core of the planet and sets the bomb timer for five minutes. Drax carries Mantis back to ship and Gamora and Nebula manage to escape. Rocket sacrifices his final spacesuit to Yondu, aware that he cannot save both Yondu and Peter. Despite Gamora's attempt to return for Peter, Rocket restrains her to prevent the loss of another friend. Ego implores Peter to halt the bomb, asserting that it will render him merely a regular human. Peter, however, embraces his humanity and allows the bomb to detonate. Ego's human form disintegrates as the planet succumbs to a cataclysmic explosion. Yondu swoops in and rescues Peter, donning the suit to safeguard him. Yondu affirms that while Ego was his biological father, he was never a true father figure. Tragically, Yondu succumbs to the frigid expanse of space and Peter mournfully witnesses his demise. The Guardians make preparation for Yondu's Ravager funeral, aiming to give him a fitting farewell. Kraglin presents Peter with a Zune as a replacement for his lost Walkman, a gesture to make up for Yondu's unfinished intention to give it to him. In return, Peter entrusts Kraglin with Yondu's arrow, believing that Yondu would have wanted him to possess it. Nebula departs on her personal mission to seek out and confront Thanos, but not before reconciling with Gamora. Mantis opts to remain with the Guardians, choosing to be part of their team. As Yondu's body floats out into the vatness of space, the Guardians witness numerous other Ravenger ships arriving to pay their respects to their fallen comrade. The movie concludes with five in-credit scenes. 1. Kraglin attempts to practice using Yondu's arrow but struggles to control it, accidentally piercing Drax with it in the process. 2. Starcar, in honor of Yondu's sacrifice, assembles his own team consisting of Martin X, Tenyaga, Charlie 27, Starhawk, and Mainframe. Number 3. Aisha and her sovereign chambermaid discuss a new plan to exact revenge on their enemies. Aisha is shown near a birthing pod, eagerly anticipating the emergence of a powerful being she intends to use against the Guardians. She dubs this creation Adam, referring to Adam Warlock. Number 4. Groot has grown into a teenager, and Peter scolds him for leaving his roots scattered around. Groot playfully mocks Peter and engages in video games. Number 5. In his customary cameo appearance, an elderly Stanley sits with the Watchers, sharing tales on his past adventures. However, the Watchers eventually grow bored and depart, leaving Stanley behind. And the movie ends here. If you enjoyed, please consider like and subscribing. See you in the next one.